They had no baptism. Amen. Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard it. That heard it. Hallelujah. They wasn't sitting around just saying amen. No, no. Their heart going to God. That's right. Was open. That's right. Their heart was open. That's it. Stop pushing God. Go ahead, man. So far. Before we delve into the video, it's important to highlight that I'll be breaking down some of the points mentioned into subjects to enhance clarity, especially for new converts. Towards the end of the video, I'll explain why failing to understand this message as a Christian can significantly hinder your spiritual journey. Okay, let's watch. You see, in some cases, people wonder why some people come out the water speaking in town, or why some people who haven't been here long receive the Holy Ghost so fast. Everything is still new to them. They don't have a lot to hold on to. That's right. So the moment they repent of their sins, they are so open and That's ready right. for the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're open. Now do you hear what I'm talking? That's right. Versus someone who've been exposed to the word of righteousness and now they're struggling with this, struggling with that, struggling with the other. Right. You have more to give up. That's right. And the more you learn, right. glory to God about God's way, yeah. the more you have to pull off, stop doing, come up, and lay aside. That's right. There is this sense of pride, length of years, dedicated to serving God comes with. It's an error to think your relationship with God is much better than another fellow simply because you've been Christian much longer than they are. That's pride. That sense of entitlement. People feel deserving of God's attention because they've been Christians for long. According to a data I have with me, most people born in Christian homes or folks who've been Christians their entire lives, especially those occupying higher positions in church, don't tend to do well both in life and their ministries because they have this sense of entitlement whilst they worship. The focus shifts from what does God require of me to what can God do for me. This was a major problem the Apostle Paul had with Jews who had converted to follow Christ. These Jews, although were saved by Christ, were still motivated by spiritual pride. They could not accept the fact that salvation had been made completely free through Christ after they had invested so much time obeying the law to end their salvation. And so you would find most of these Jewish converts again with Paul on salvation through circumcision and were bold enough preaching it um, on the street corners and in churches. These prideful Jews were a real problem in the church of Antioch where Paul began his ministry and in Philippians when Paul had grown in the ministry. They never leave. They never leave. And um, even up to today, they still exist in our churches as well. Never let a group of hypocrites within the church make you feel unworthy of God's presence or love. It's crucial to remember that your ability to function effectively in Christ should not be underestimated just because you are new to the faith. So when we preach the new birth, Right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall, shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't look at the Holy Ghost right away for next day. Right. Look at it right now. That's right. That's right. In fact. You should be looking at it before you're baptized. That's right. Well, Peter, speak the word. That's right. Holy oh, Ghost. Yes. Yeah, the Holy Ghost. Tell on all of them. Tell on all of them. Which heard the word. That heard the word. That's right. They had no baptism. Amen. Thank God, but their heart was accepted to God's word. That's right. Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard it. That heard it. Thank God they 
of the circumcision, of the circumcision which, believed were astonished. which believed there was amazed that this happened. As many as came with Peter. Many of them that accompanied Peter because on other ethnic groups, the Gentiles, was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know it? Was poured out the How gift. How did they know? For they heard them speak with tongues. And what else they do? And magnify God. They got glad! Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so he mentioned something I've been writing on for almost a year now. It's a difficult subject, right? What happens to people who never heard of Jesus? What happens to them? On a surface level, it might seem illogical for God to allow people to go to hell simply because they never accepted Jesus. However, a careful study of God's love might reveal that people end up in hell precisely because God is loving and respects our free will decision. You see, it wouldn't make sense for God to force people into his kingdom against their will, right? If you don't want God, he's not going to force you into his kingdom. In conclusion, you come to realize people don't go to hell because they didn't know God or accepted Christ. People simply end up in hell because they didn't want God. At the end of each person's life, God is going to grant them exactly what they requested for. The preacher man mentioned the Apostle Peter and the Italian regiment Cornelius. Now, carefully studying that narrative, this is what I came to conclude. Acts 10.2 a devout man who alongside his household feared God. He made many charitable donations and prayed to God always. Okay, if you've watched the video this far, kindly don't forget to subscribe. Also, I would like you to assess whatever that I'm about to say from this point on and share with me in the comment section below the conclusion of your assessment. During Cornelius' time, there were numerous gods worshipped and he could have been praying to any of them. However, what set Cornelius apart was his consistent practice of good deed and his refusal to bow down to any other god except to look up and pray. God recognized Cornelius' sincerity and purity of heart. As a result, God intervened by sending the Apostle Peter to preach the good news about the true and living Almighty God, the one in charge of the entire universe, to Cornelius. This event highlights God's recognition of genuine faith and his willingness to reach out to those who earnestly seek him, regardless of their background and previous beliefs. People know there is a God, an uncaused cause of this universe, a mind proud to our minds, in charge of everything that we behold, yet they choose to make themselves gods. That's what separates sincere seekers like Cornelius from others. He could take Zacchaeus, Cornelius, Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, the Ethiopian eunuch, the list goes on and on, and you would come to recognize a character trait in all these men who sought after God. That was humility. Today people can't find God because they feel they know it all. Right? But they know God is good. God still sends people and so today people still travel longer distances proclaiming the good news even in jungles. People who might never encounter a preacher might surely have a personal encounter with God as well. Just like Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Joseph, David. All these men never met Jesus, but in their humility, they encountered the true God. God is a fair judge and he wouldn't or isn't going to rip anybody off on judgment day. Each and every one would get exactly what they deserve. When you repent of your sins, that's it and go down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's right. Don't get the attitude of sitting back. No. With the mindset, waiting for the Holy Ghost, waiting for the Holy Ghost, waiting for the Holy Ghost. No. Look for it then, yes. now, now, and if it don't come then and now, keep the sin and now in your mind. That's right. And in your heart. That's right. Never put God afar off. That's right. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Stop pushing God so far. That's right. He fulfills heaven and earth. That's right. So don't ever sit back well, I'll wait and see the Holy Ghost next year. Or I'll wait to see the Holy Ghost next month. Amen. You're setting yourself up yeah. 
to be so complacent. Right. But what saith it? What you say? In the book of Romans chapter 10 and at verse 8. Glory to God. But what saith it? What? The word is nigh thee. What? The word is nigh thee. The word is nigh thee. Right e there. Even in thy mouth. Where is it? In thy mouth. It's in your mouth. And. And. In thy heart. In your heart. That is the word. The word. Of Come on. Glory to God. Word of faith. Glory to God that we preach. In order for them to receive the Holy Ghost while Peter was preaching, they believed the word that he preached. That's right. They believed it. Hallelujah. They wasn't sitting around just saying amen. No, no. Their heart going to God. That's right. Was open. That's right. Their heart was open. That's it. Hallelujah. You don't sit around Hallelujah. just saying amen. Go ahead, man. Open up your heart. That's right. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Open up your mind. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead. That's good to come in there. That's right. The word is nigh thee. Do you hear the word talking? But what saith it? What you say? The word is nigh the thee. The word is nigh thee. Is right there. Even in thy mouth. The word is God. That's right. God saying I'm right there. The word is nigh thee. It's close. That's right. Right there. That's right. At your mouth. And in At thy your heart. heart. Yeah. The word it's of right faith. There. Which we preach. Hallelujah. That's it. I said it right there. That's it. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stop pushing God. Go ahead, man. So far. Hallelujah. If I don't receive it today. Hallelujah. Don't push it off so far. That's right. The word is nigh. Come on back to my. That's right. If I don't receive it tomorrow, that's right. Don't push it off so far. Amen. Come on back. That's it. Come on back tomorrow. The word is not yeah, thee. Yeah, but believe it. Go ahead. The thing that make me call on God, I believe it. That's it. If I didn't believe, I wouldn't talk to him. That's right. That's right. What say it? Your heart. Go ahead, man. And your mind. Go ahead, brother. Have to connect. That's it. With God's word. That's it. That's right. Hallelujah. He give the Holy Ghost to those that obey him. That obey him. Yes. Amen. He gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey him. That's a powerful point. Acts 5.32 The word obey used in this context is simply receiving Christ willingly out of humility. Freely following Christ. And by this kind of obedience, you receive the Holy Ghost. No works or whatsoever attached to it. Many people think of the Holy Spirit as some kind of power given to only people who live a supposedly righteous life. To bring it down to our perspective, people think only pastors get to have the Holy Spirit. In the New Covenant, nothing is reserved for any kind of people. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. The parallel between the narrative of the prodigal son and the life of Saul, whom later became Paul, is indeed striking. Both stories illustrate the transformative power of God's grace and redemption. Never count yourself as unworthy. Doesn't matter what you did. Always keep in mind that you don't make yourself better. God makes you better as a result of you trusting in him and then deciding to follow him. So always do well to stay in his presence even when you count yourself fallen. For if the righteous fall seven times, he shall rise seven times. And this is scriptural. What are you doing? They keep God from personalizing That's right. this gift for you. Right. What are you doing? Go ahead. He gave the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost to them that obey him. To them yes, sir. that obey him. Someone said, if that's the case, Pastor Dennis, 
why a person receive it in the holy in the false church. They believe it. They believe it. Someone said, well, I thought you had to be right to receive the Holy Ghost. And no, no, no. The Holy Ghost come to make you right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They come to make you right. These signs shall follow them. These signs shall follow them that what? That believe. What? These signs shall follow them that believe. What I got to do? Believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may not be right, but I believe. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I may not be right, but okay. I believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. That's what God wants. That's right. That's right. That's what God wants. That's it. He that comes to God must, right. must believe. Must believe. You must do it. That's right. If you don't believe, you're going through the motions. Yeah. Yes. The Bible says that which is not of faith it's is sin. sin. It's a sin not to believe God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask God Go ahead, man. to increase your faith. Right. Doubting nothing. That's right. These signs. These signs shall follow them that believe. Believer. Believer. A believer. Believe. That's it. That's I it. may be a Baptist, but I believe, believe what Jesus said. That's right. That's something. Not right. Wrong religion. Baptized wrong. That's right. But I believe. Believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And won't be for long, Hold that on. believer Amen. is going to come through speaking in tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. Many of us here Hallelujah. came out of some apostolic church. That's right. And many of you received the Holy Ghost there. Women preachers was there. That's right. They believe in remarriage and divorce. That's right. Some have three gods. That's right. But I believe in believe. the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. And these signs shall follow these them. These signs. Yes. Amen. Shall follow them that believe. Them. It didn't say just them and the truth. No. You got it wrong. That's right. It said them that believe. Them that believe. And if you think the uh, only person that believes yes. is one that is baptized, you got people that believe that never heard of the baptism. That's true. Never heard of it. That's right. But they believe in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Someone says that Bible? Yes. How then will you baptize? How then will you baptize? We were baptized under John baptism. John baptism. Paul said, John preached, you should believe on him that come after him. after him. And that is on Christ Jesus. Right. And they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord oh. Jesus. Yes. Then the apostles laid yes. hands on them yes. and they received the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Most ignorant Christians gauge their connection with the Holy Spirit based off their emotions. They may feel that God is with them when they feel or experience positive feelings and believe God has abandoned them when they engage in activities contrary to biblical morals. However, this approach reveals lack of understanding of the true nature of the role of the Holy Spirit in a believer. This is a common reason why some people leave Christianity. Right? They start to feel burdened by the need to perform certain works to make themselves right with God. But Paul reminds us that we are saved by grace, not by our own works or effort. When people lack a deep understanding of Christ's presence within them, they may feel isolated and alone when they fall into sin. They mistakenly believe that they have to do certain works to earn their way back into God's favor or God's presence. Some people resort to fasting after they have sinned thinking it will make things right with God. But fasting shouldn't be used as a way to atone for sins. 
right similarly some tend to charitable works or any form of work that consists of deeds what we call good deeds after sinning hoping to pay god back for forgiveness but charity isn't a form of payment for wrongdoing and it shouldn't be feeling lost and frustrated as a result of not having the kind of work to please god some individuals distance themselves from god until they feel better about themselves but truth is christ has already forgiven all your sins on the cross and so nothing you do surprises god or nothing you or no sin you commit is so huge that it scares god and then he runs away from you even when things seem dark god remains present he never leaves right so instead of shaming ourselves or trying to earn forgiveness through works we should boldly turn to god in repentance and receive his grace of forgiveness the holy spirit is a gift he never takes it back